I also saw this clip. This isn't a, a Twitter thread clip. This is mostly a, um, I think a topic that's worth talking about just because it's a, it's a concept that I think not a lot of people are even aware of when it comes to fighting games. Phenom posted this clip earlier for Street Fighter VI and uh, it's worth checking out. Just check, check this out. I want you to look at this. This is Phenom. Uh, one of the best Ken players there is, right, in Street Fighter VI. Uh, and he's going up against JP. Uh, Kakeru, I think Evo finalist. Uh, one of the best, uh, the best JPs there is. These are actually two legends of the Street Fighter game at the moment, playing at their best in Street Fighter VI. You got that? You understand? All right. Is this a problem? And I, I made a response to it where it's like, I think if this happened at Evo, right? If this was, if this was something that at an Evo event, after like the sixth th throw, the crowd would have been going insane. Like absolutely insane. But to anybody that has actually played Street Fighter VI at a high level, knows that this is 1000% the way this game is sometimes. Whether you're on the receiving end or the dishing end of this. This has happened to you before. Maybe not to the extent of this, but for 100%, if you've made it to like, if you were in master rank in the first month this game was out, oh yeah, there was, there was a solid like week and a half where everybody was complaining about throw loops, uh, but also proposing a, uh, a question. Is this a problem with the game, right? So throw loops are kind of interesting because, you know, we have this very extreme example of uh, JP's ass getting tossed for quite literally his entire life bar. It's important to know that on the receiving end of this, you can do so much, right? JP as a character literally has one of the best special moves in the game to counter this. But it's the fascinating thing about Street Fighter where if you have so many options against throw, because throw teching is not a reaction. You have to like anticipate it's gonna happen, which is why Shimmy even works in this game. Why would they keep throw loops in the game when it was something that was removed from Street Fighter V? Like, that's a great question. What I find fascinating about it is that Street Fighter V is made by the same people as Street Fighter VI, right? So there's the same folks. They clearly went through this process before and they were like, hey, we gotta remove throw loops. How do they fix throw loops in Street Fighter V? After you threw a character, you were no longer like plus. You couldn't dash forward and have enough time to get up their grill again to get the throw like a second time. Very few characters could do this, like Karen was notably really good at this throughout the majority of the game's lifespan. What they did was just like spread out the characters a little bit after a throw. You weren't left in like a neutral situation where you're literally up each other's guts. So you don't get mega plus frames on throw anymore. That makes sense, you know? Especially in a Street Fighter V situation, I think it makes perfect sense because there wasn't a ton of defensive options in, in that game, really. There wasn't a ton of ways for you to sort of weasel your way out of that situation. So throw loops were, were pretty strong, at least in the first uh, season or two of Street Fighter V. So obviously there's a question here. Why would they bring it back to Street Fighter VI? So many people had this question. So many pro players are like, oh my God, this was one of the worst parts of Street Fighter V. Why the hell would they bring this shit back? You know, as I said before, Street Fighter V is not Street Fighter VI. Street Fighter VI has some of the most defensive mechanics ever in a Capcom fighting game. Your options on Wake Up are massive and you can add a complete other option to JP on Wake Up because he literally has a counter throw EX move. The crazy thing about this clip isn't an issue of, uh, is this potentially a problem visually with Street Fighter VI? Like, yeah, maybe. They, they might do something about this in the future, sure. We are still in the vanilla version of this fighting game. But the reason this stayed from the previous game, even though they got rid of the previous game, is because this game offers you so many ways to get out of this shit, it's crazy, man. Granted, options will still lose to the others. Every fighting game is essentially an RPS mechanic, like all the time. That's just the nature of most fighting games now. But still, there is an element to this, which is called conditioning. We haven't seen the matches that came before this. Everyone just looks at this and starts judging it immediately, right? The important thing to realize here is that you just can't run up to everybody and grab them. I feel like the people that look at this and see this shit, 
have never gotten shimmied in their entire life. Because what happens if you just tech the throw, right? In, in most games where strike throw is the entire aspect of it. A shimmy is when you walk forward into throw range, visually looking like you're about to throw the opponent, and then you slowly step back out of throw range. You can't react to it. It's abating your throw. This is a huge part of Street Fighter V and is also a huge part of Street Fighter VI. So this is where the whole mentality of just take the throw, dude. Just take the, take the goddamn throw. Because the throw game in Street Fighter VI is, is very similar to um, Street Fighter V, outside of the fact that, you know, oh, the, the ability to throw loop your opponent actually came back. So how is one of the most illustrious players in the game getting throw looped. For anybody that has been in this situation or put somebody else there, you completely understand why. We can almost break this shit down. From the first thing you need to know, the first thing you need to analyze in this situation is that you're playing against somebody that's actually good. You're playing against one of the best Ken players there is. Of course, Ken is all about media attacks, right? He's super good at media attacks. However, you know, perfect parry exists and all this kind of stuff. But you also have access to uh, EX Amnesia, which counters throws and physical attacks and is one of the best moves in the whole game. So JP is just a god on wake up. You know that they know that, okay? So clearly they're not gonna go for it again because I'm threatening. You're gonna have to stop. Many people will be able to tell you when you get to the later levels of fighting games, it's about being as random as possible at times. It's about being as unreadable as possible. Your layers of offense need to have so many layers that you might not know exactly what you're going to do until you make that immediate decision and you can make an adjustment, right? Or be as random as doing the same thing over and over again. That is not what happens in this clip. It might look like what happens, but it's not. I'm gonna look at every single throw and try to put yourself in the mind of Kakeru, who can easily tech a throw or do a billion options that JP has on wake up. Let's look at this, hold on a second. So, what just came from this? A scary situation, a drive rush, right? Ken is put in plus frames, he can do everything, including shimmy the shit out of JP, and uh, you could eat possibly 30 to 50% damage, you know, just maybe. Just, you could, you could eat also corner carry. Ken's also a scary character, you're gonna get corner carried the whole way. Another scary situation for almost all characters in this game. Oh, I'm not gonna throw tech. I'm, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna bait me. He's, he's just waiting for the bait because this situation is literally, I'm gonna bait you to throw. He doesn't, he throws. That's fine. Right, that's fine. Uh, you're, we're, we're all Kakeru in this situation, we're all JP. That's fine. Like you didn't take 30 to 40% life, cool. So we're just going to, um, we're just gonna get up and start over again. Oh shit, he did it again. In the same situation, this time it's different. This time he didn't go for the jab. So he wasn't plus frames at all. We were incorrect. He didn't go for the same thing again. He didn't pick rock this time. He actually picked paper. So, okay, all right. Our, our option was technically not the right one. Okay, okay, cool. We're just gonna take another throw. Now the corner is involved. In this situation, we're gonna get up and this bitch is gonna throw me again, right? He's gonna throw me again. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna tech that fucking throw. Wait a minute, we're in the corner. If you tech the throw against Ken in the corner, you're taking even more damage. Uh-oh, now, now this is scary because he doesn't even need to use meter anymore. He's just gonna cash out and get mega damage. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's just hope he does a meaty here. Oh, he didn't do the meaty. God damn it. A lot of people have seen this situation. Most Ken players will go for three throws tops and then bait throw. Now he's gonna shimmy and I'm going to, uh, I'm just, we're just gonna reset the neutral. It's gonna be fine. Okay, he didn't shimmy me. He went for a fourth. The last thing I want is to get thrown again because I've been thrown four times. My name is Kakeru, I'm big mad here. We're gonna be here in the corner and now I would prefer to take another throw because the corner is still as threatening as it was before. Throw me again, you piece of shit. All right, he threw me again. Now I'm clearly thinking about this too much. Never thrown me this much before. How many matches we played before this? You know, I don't even know, but he's never gone for this many throws before. He always shimmies after like a couple of the same ones. The thing is, he's not even doing meaties now. He's just walk up and throwing. So the meaties gonna come. I mean, he has to do the meaty now, right? He obviously is gonna meaty me, right? So I'm gonna parry, possibly perfect parry, and we're gonna turn this whole shit around. I'm gonna push his ass to the middle of the screen. It's gonna be great. Here we go. All right, he got punished counter throw. This was the best thing this guy could have done. It was the best thing he could have done here. 
And uh, what was the result? It hurts. It hurts. But what what happened if he did not get regular shimmy, right? What happened if he did not go for, uh, if he tried to throw tech here? He's actually dead. Now he gets another chance. He gets another chance to live. Something different has technically happened every single time here. We have gone through every single scenario in our heads about a, a situational awareness where we've just, you know, made the wrong call. We, we ran rock and we just got it every single time incorrectly. So clearly he's gonna shimmy us again, right? God damn it. It was the perfect counter. He knew exactly what Kakero was gonna do in that situation. So what has he gone back to? Oh, now we're back to thing number two. Now he's just walking forward and throwing me. Now it's the last one. Clearly we're all Kakero in this situation. We've all played enough Street Fighter VI to be in this moment and to know that this moment can't happen. He's not gonna throw us again, clearly. He ain't throwing us again. There's no way. We're not gonna let him have that because we haven't been shimmied yet and we're not gonna be shimmied now. God damn it. I hope we've all learned a thing or two today. I hope what this does is inspire you. At a surface level, make you feel like you can go win a million dollars in Street Fighter VI. You got some guy, some 20 year old dude, he's going to work and he's like, man, I play so much Street Fighter VI, I'm so good at it. I watched a clip of like the best Japanese players and the best Ken in the world. And man, I'm better than them. He got thrown so many times, he didn't even take a throw. I think I can win that million dollars. I hope that's what this does. Because everyone will look at this and think that they're a god. How the hell can these players even be any good? This is the difference between actually fighting good players. Go up against people that are truly blessed at fighting games and aren't online ranked matches. One thing I have to give you an example of, uh, and it's Justin Wong. A lot of people look at Justin and uh, they don't realize how, how high level of a caliber player he is. He's actually one of the greatest players of all time. While he hasn't gone to a ton of tournaments and competed lately, he's like focusing on family and content creation, which he absolutely deserves because he's one of the best. So people look at him playing games and just assume that you're looking at a human. And what they don't realize is that you're, you're looking at somebody that is actually one of the greatest of all time. Watching the gameplay of somebody that is so good at this stuff that will still lose every once in a while because, you know, Eventually, their humanity will peek through. But this is uh, this person's a god. They're they're actually that good at this. They're suspiciously harmless. And then you know, all of a sudden, you uh, started clapping in their face or something like that. When you fight Justin Wong, uh, you you feel okay. And then you get a couple of matches in or something like that. And he has this very weird ability. And people have said this before. This isn't just me. When I have fought Justin in games, going back to like Marvel versus Capcom 3, I'm winning. This is called the Wong Factor chat. I literally have the life lead by a good chunk. Why do I feel like I'm losing? I don't get it. Why do I feel like I'm losing? I go back and I, 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 I've, I've watched matches of me playing Justin. And I remember feeling the moment in that moment where I'm like, I swear to God, I had less life than he did here. And then I made some really stupid decision. And then all of a sudden, he just takes advantage of that and just waits for it. Justin makes the most insane comebacks possibly in the entire, in the entire industry. And it's because his play style makes you feel like you're losing. It makes you feel desperation. It also is a culmination of what even made moment 37 with Daigo even fucking happen. The reason like that stuff happened is that Daigo was pissed. Daigo did not like Justin's play style. It, it really upset him, right? So it's set up for an incredible moment that of course didn't work out for Justin in that one moment. But another example of it where it's like, shit, man. Like the way this guy's playing is just like something about it, like fucks with your head. See, that's the most insane thing about fighting games in general is that you'll look at these situations, you're like, dude, we could, I could do that. Bro, I can do that. I do all the same stuff these players do. I can, I can go win a million dollars. Of course I can. Oh my God. This is an almost unwinnable situation. We're not giving up. Almost unwinnable. Never over till it's over. Never over till it's over. This is 
double, baby. This is NBC2. This yeah, is unwinnable. shit for years so just because you see a couple of the best players in the world getting throw looped or throw looping doesn't mean that there is nothing going on at the surface level again street fighter 6 is a game that offers so many options uh there's levels to this shit the last thing i want to highlight is a is a real quick thing sort of emphasizes this as well and infill talked about this as well infill's a super smart guy some people may see this as a weakness of street fighter 6 all of its like you know things like throw loops and shit like that that the game is random or uncontrollable, but to me it's the exact opposite. Perfect play is only impressive if it's hard to do. And true player expression shows up the most when they're stressed and making mistakes. And this is very much very representative in older fighting games, when older fighting games had real execution. There's not a ton of execution in Street Fighter 6, there's not a ton of execution in Street Fighter 5. Where's the execution going? Oh, well, the execution now is an awareness and it might not as come across as immediately as impressive but when you're going up against the best players in the world and they're able to do something like throw loop you 12 times until you're dead it's it's very impressive it's insane to see that phenom actually threw one of the best jps in the world that many times and made the correct assumption like one out of three every single time oh shit.